Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Shalom Israel. Most sign Christ bless. My name is Captain Joel. Shalom Israel, Officer Jezreel. And welcome to 15 Minutes with the Captains. Today we're going to discuss Colossians 3 verse 11. We're going to discuss who are the Greeks, who are the Jews, who are the circumcision and the uncircumcision, the barbarians as well as the Scythians. All right, Colossians 3 verse 11. The book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 11. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew. Where there is neither Greek nor nor Jews. Many of you within your Christian church, anytime you reference who are the Greeks, you automatically refer them to the Caucasians, white people. But you're going to realize that the Greek people are Jews that took on the Greek customs or that were Hellenized during the time of Alexander the Greek, as well as Antioch Epiphanes and Ptolemy. All right, let's go to 2 Maccabees chapter 6, verse 6 in the Apocrypha. So the Apocrypha was taken out during the 1700s by the Protestant Christians. We're just going to see within the history of the Apocrypha has the Greek captivity. In the Old Testament, you have the Assyrian captivity. You have after that the Babylonian captivity. Then the Persian and Medes. Then you go straight to the New Testament, which starts the Roman captivity. What is the missing captivity? The Greeks, the Greek Empire. That's the missing captivity that you find in the Apocrypha. All right? The book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So neither was it lawful for a Jew to keep the Sabbath days, to keep the ancient feasts such as Passover, Day of Atonement, New Moons. So it was unlawful to keep our heritage, our customs, or as well to profess ourselves to be called a what? Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So we couldn't profess ourselves to be called a Jew. Just like today, during the time of modern slavery, we couldn't call ourselves our biblical titles, but they gave us what? African American, Haitian, West Indian, Jamaican, Puerto Rican. So they gave us Gentile names. Verse 7. <coughs> And in the day of the king's birth, every month, they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. Mm -hmm. Moreover, they went out a decree to the neighboring cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. So there went out a decree by Ptolemy about the what? Went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen mm -hmm. by the suggestion of Ptolemy. So Ptolemy the, sent out to the neighbor cities of the heathen to suggest what? A suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews. Against the Jews. Meaning it wasn't only the Greeks, but all the heathen was joined together against the Israelites. Read. That they should observe the same fashion. That we should observe their holidays, their customs. We can no longer keep our Sabbath days, our ancient feasts, such as the new moons, Passover, Day of Atonement, Memorial Blowing of Trumpets. So we have to observe the Greek fashion, read. And be partakers of their sacrifice. And we have to be partakers of their sacrifices. Sacrificing to Zeus, Venus, Mars, all the ancient Greek and Roman gods, read. Verse 9. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles. Whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles. What is the manners of the Gentiles? Meaning the mannerisms. Meaning the way they spoke. The language that they spoke. The way they dressed. The customs that they took in, partook in. Meaning as well as their, uh, well, the Olympics. Sports. Read? The sports. Should be put to death. They were put to death. Read. Then might a man have seen the present misery. So we couldn't call ourselves Jews. If we couldn't call ourselves Jews, then what would we call ourselves? Hmm. 
So if we had to partake into the manner of the Greeks' customs, as well we weren't able to call ourselves Jews, what were the Jews calling themselves? Greeks. Greeks. Or they call them Hellenists. Hellenized, or today we call it to be assimilated to America's customs. Just like today we call ourselves African Americans or Americans. There's no difference during the time of the Greeks and today in America. All right? Let's go to 2 Maccabees chapter 4, verse 13. The book of 2 Maccabees chapter 4, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Now, such was the height of Greek fashions. And the increase of heathenish manners. So during the time of Alexander, we Hellenized all the dark races. Such was the height of Greek fashion. That's when everybody was Hellenized. They had to take partake in their customs, speak their language, as well as worship their gods. Read. Through the exceeding profaneness of Jason. So yeah, wicked Israelites push the Greek fashion and the Greek customs, even the Greek attire, such as the toga. Read. That ungodly wretch and no high priest. Mm -hmm. That the priest had no courage to serve any more at the altar, mm -hmm. but despised in the temple. So the priests, the Levitical priests, despise to serve at the altar. They don't want to get sacrificed. They don't want to keep the feast days or get sacrifices for our sins and offerings for sins. But the what? Read. But despising the temple. They despise God's temple. Read. And neglecting the sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Hasten to be partakers of the unlawful allowance mm -hmm. in the place of exercise after the game of discus called them forth. And that's where the Olympics come from. So they, they neglected the daily sacrifices and they went to what? Partake in an unlawful manner such as Olympics and discus. Read on. Not setting by the honors of their fathers. Not setting by the honors of their fathers, meaning keeping the Sabbath days, the ancient feasts, keeping the laws. Read. But like in the glory of the Grecians, best of all. They like in the glory of the Grecians, best of all. Meaning they took on their nationality. They took on their language. They took on their customs. They took on their gods. Read. Verse 16. By reason whereof sore calamity came upon them. Mm -hmm. For they had them to be their enemies and avengers, whose custom they followed so earnestly. And unto whom they desire to be like in so all things. whose custom they follow so earnestly, and whom they desire to be like in what? All things. And all things, meaning all mannerism, they decided they wanted to be just like the Greeks. They took on their names, they took on their nationality, they took on the customs, as well as worshiping their gods. Alright? Now, let's go to a book called The Mannerism of the Israelites says the first privilege the Jews always asked on these occasions was the free exercise of their religion and the observance of their law. But in other respects, they could not dwell, they could not well avoid following the manners of the Greeks in many points, as they had those of the Chaldeans and others, and especially they were obliged to talk the Greek tongue, which was then become common all over the East. So they were obliged to talk the Greek tongue. They, they became Greeks in a matter of all things. Read. And continue to be so while the Roman Empire lasted. Mm -hmm. Hence, several of them took Greek names as Aristobulus, mm -hmm. Philo, Andrew, Philip, or gave their Hebrew names a Greek sound and termination. So they even took on the Greek names. They wanted to be like the Greeks in all things. Read. As Jason for Jesus, mm -hmm. Simon for Simeon. Hero Salama for Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. It was probably about this time that the Jews crossed the seas and settled in Europe. For those who understood Greek and had been accustomed to live with the Greeks in Asia, Syria, and Egypt, might easily live any part of the Grecian Empire, even in Macedonia and Archaea, according as they found more convenience and liberty. And indeed, we see that St. Paul found a great number in all the Greek cities. A great number of who? Or a great number of all the Jews in the Greek cities. Read. About a great number in all the Greek cities when he went thither to preach the gospel. About 250 years after the time of Ante Antiochus the Great. Mm -hmm. These were the Jews become half Greeks. These were the Jews that became half Greeks. Read on. Whom the Jews of the East called Hellenists. Who the Jews of the East called Hellenists. The Jews of Jerusalem called the Jews half Greeks. Read. And they, appro and they appropriated to the Gentiles the name of Hellenes, mm -hmm. which properly signifies Grecians. Who are the Hellenists? Jews that spoke the Greek 
tongue. So yeah, the Jews in Jerusalem was calling the Jews that took on the custom of the Greeks. We were calling them half Greeks. We were calling them Greeks. Read. So that in the writings of St. Paul, Greek and Gentile is the same thing. Greek and Gentiles is the same thing. They're the same people. There's no difference between Greek and Jews. Read on. The Jews could not live thus intermixed with That's the Greeks. It. Now let's go to the next one. This is the same book, page 461. These Jews were called Greeks. Wait, read that again. These Jews were called Greeks. These Jews were called Greeks. Anytime you read Greek within the New Testament, know for a certainty it's talking about the Israelites that took on the Greek customs. They took on their customs, their language. They dressed like that. That's why it says they wanted to be like, like them in all things. Read. And certain it is that at the time there were Jews dispersed over Greece, mm -hmm. Asia Minor, Syria, and Egypt, where the Greek language was vernacular. Now, specifically, what kingdom were the Jews that called the Greeks that took on the customs? What were kingdom were they of? Were they of the southern kingdom or northern kingdom? Let's get the other book. Israel Redivivus. The epistles. It will, of course, be argued by those who hold the call of the Gentile theory that these Greeks were Gentiles to whom the gospel was thus early preached and who became Christians. It has, however, already been shown that this is quite antithetical to the manner in which the Greeks and Gentiles respectively are referred to in the Acts of the Apostles and in the Epistles. And it is inconsistent with the general tenor of the New Testament to come to any different conclusion that the Greeks are rather perhaps the upper classes of those who at the time went by the name of Greeks were other than the descendants of some at least of the lost ten tribes. And there you go. It shows you specifically the kingdom in which the Greeks came from. They were of the lost ten tribes. You wonder why it said there's no difference between the Greeks and the Jews. Why wasn't there any difference? Because they were the same people. They were all Israelites, the same kingdom. The difference is, during the time of King Solomon, after he sinned, he had his son Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Rehoboam his son and Jeroboam was his servant. There was a split between the kingdom, which became southern kingdom and northern kingdom. The northern kingdom went off into idolatry and eventually started serving other gods. And in the Greek captivity, they started taking on their language, their customs, their feast days, and started sacrificing unto the gods as well, partook in their unlawful allowances, such as the Olympics and the discus. And guess what? They were called Greeks by the Eastern Jews, the ten tribes of Israel. There is no difference between them. Okay, let's go back now. Colossians 3, verse 11. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 11. <coughs> Where there is neither Greek nor Jew. There is neither Greek nor Jew. Why? Because they're all the same people. They're all from the same kingdom, the kingdom of the nation of Israel. Read on. Circumcision nor uncircumcision. Circumcision nor uncircumcision. You might say, why is it referencing circumcision and uncircumcision as a group of people? What is this making reference to? If you don't know the history of the Apocrypha, which is located in the original 16 King James 1611 Bible, you would never know what it's actually talking about. Let's go to 2 Maccabees. 1 Maccabees 2, verse 42. Why does it say circumcision and uncircumcision? 1 Maccabees chapter 2, verse 42. Mm -hmm. Then came there unto him a company of Assyrians, who were mighty men of Israel. Who are the Assyrians in the New Testament? The Assyrians are the Pharisees in the New Testament. Read on. Who were mighty men of Israel. Even all such as were voluntarily devoted unto the law. Mm -hmm. Also all they that fled for persecution joined themselves unto them and were a stay unto them. Now jump to verse 45. Verse 45. Then 
Mattathias and his friends went round about and pulled down the altars. And what children soever they found within the coast of Israel uncircumcised, those they circumcised valiantly. That's why they was called the circumcision. Why? Because during the Greek captivity, we have Antiochus Epiphanes. He prohibited us to keep the Sabbath days. He prohibited us to be called a Jew as well as to what? Become circumcised as well as to what? Sacrifice. So we were prohibited to keep our covenant, the covenant established with Abraham. So Mattathias, as well as the Assyrians, known in the New Testament as the Pharisees, were going around circumcising Israel that was uncircumcised because it was against the Greek laws. It was prohibited for us to circumcise our children and many Israelites were put to death. That's why in the New Testament, the Pharisees was going around doing what? circumcising Israel and telling them to uh, to um, sacrifice as well. Let's go to Romans 3 verse 1. The book of Romans chapter 3 verse 1. What advantage then have the Jew? For the Jews to have advantage, meaning they had to have the advantage of all nations upon the earth. The advantage is that what we were chosen above all nations. Read. Or what profit is there of circumcision? There's a profit of being circumcised. Because what? The covenant was given to Abraham. The covenant of promise. Read. Much every way. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Chiefly, mainly because that unto the Jews were given the Bible, were given the laws. So the Jews were called the circumcision because of that adhere to the law and the covenant that was given to Abraham. Because why? Under the Greek captivity, it was unlawful for us to circumcise our children. But you have Mattathias as well as the Assyrians in the New Testament, which are called the Pharisees, were valiantly circumcising Israel. And they carried that custom all the way to the New Testament. And that's why you read in Acts chapter 15, they were saying, it's needful for you to circumcise after the manner of Moses. Meaning after you circumcise, keeping the covenant that was given to Abraham, you also had to give a sacrifice in which we were not able to give during the time of the Greek captivity. All right. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. The book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh... So Paul is calling to remembrance. What captivity are we in? The Roman captivity. So wherefore, remember ye and that ye being in time past. What time past? What is he referencing? The Greek captivity. What book are we reading from? The book of Ephesians. Where's Ephesus? Located in Greece. So he's speaking to the Israelites in the Ephesus, or the Greeks, the provinces of the Greek cities. Read. Wherefore, remember that ye being in in time past, Gentiles in the flesh. Ye being in times past, Gentiles in the flesh. Read. Who are called uncircumcision. Who are called uncircumcision. Read. By that which is called the circumcision. Hmm. Who are the circumcision? The Jews are the circumcision. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. The southern kingdom were called the circumcision. So we, the southern kingdom called the northern kingdom, which you're going to find out, the uncircumcision. Let's go read on. In the flesh made by hands. Why does it say in the flesh made by hands? Because why? You have to take um, a sharp object, a knife, to circumcise the foreskin of the penis. This is literally talking about physical circumcision. The covenant that was given to Abraham. So let's go to Acts chapter 11. Who are the uncircumcision? So we just proved that the circumcision is referencing the Jews, the southern kingdom. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Now, who are the uncircumcision? Acts chapter 11, verse 1. The book of Acts chapter 11, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. So, we're in Acts chapter 11. So, who are the Gentiles that received the word of God? In the previous chapter, in Acts chapter 10, Peter was sent a vision and a dream to go to Cornelius. So, the Gentiles of which he's referencing is making reference to Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. Read on. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, mm -hmm. they that were of the circumcision, they that were of the circumcision, they that were of the Jews, the southern kingdom, read, 
contended with him, mm -hmm. saying, Thou wentest in to men uncircumcised. What men is he talking about? Cornelius, which was called a Gentile. Thou wentest in to men uncircumcised. Read. And, and this eat with them. Who did Peter eat with? Cornelius and the men of his household. So Cornelius was not only called a Gentile, but he was called the uncircumcision. Now, what nation was Cornelius comes from? Because a lot of people say that Cornelius was a Caucasian or he was an Italian because of what? He came from an Italian band. So he was an Italian army. And some people, for some ungodly reason, think that all white people were in the army. No. Black people were in the army, or Israelites were in the army as well. Now let's go to Acts chapter 10. Let's get the history. Let's see what kingdom was Cornelius was of, or what nation. Acts 10 verse 31. The book, of Acts, the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 31. And said Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thy arms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. You see, that's why Simon, or Peter, was sent to Cornelius, the Gentile, or uncircumcision. Read. He is lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner, by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. Mm -hmm. Immediately, immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that are come. Now, therefore, are, are we all here pr present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God? Then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth. I perceive that God is no respect of persons, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. So everybody, for some reason, stops at that verse. They say, you see, but in every nation, he that feareth him. So every nation making a reference to the Arabs, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Caucasians. So that's the Christian mindset. In every nation... He that worketh righteousness, read, is accepted with him. All nations are accepted with God. And they stop at that verse. But they never, for some reason, read the next verse. Read. Verse 36. Read. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel. Wait a minute. Why it says, in every nation, he that worketh righteousness is accepted with him. But the next verse, verse 36, it says, the word which God sent unto who? The children of Israel. The Chinese. The children of Israel. The Japanese. The children of Israel. Maybe Cornelius was an Italian. The children of Israel. So Cornelius evidently was an Israelite. Cornelius, I'll say again, evidently was an Israelite. So for some reason, how do we get that Cornelius was an Edomite or a Caucasian, which you call an Italian? Because why? You were never properly educated in a true word of God. Now you're receiving the proper education. How to identify who are the Greeks? Who are the Jews? Who are the Gentiles? Who are the Scythians, the barbarians, the circumcision, as well as the uncircumcision? And you're getting true Bible facts today. Now, let's go to verse 28 to see what kingdom was Cornelius of. So we just identified that Cornelius was an Israelite. And being in Acts chapter 11, he was called a Gentile as well as the uncircumcision. So we identified that the uncircumcision and Gentiles were Israelites. Acts 10 verse 28. Now let's identify the kingdom which Cornelius came from. Read. The book of Acts chapter 10 verse 28. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Ye know how that is, it is unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company, or come unto one of another nation. So we just identified Cornelius was an Israelite. So why is it now that Cornelius is saying it is an unlawful thing for one that is a Jew to keep company of another, one of another nation, given that Cornelius is an Israelite? If you don't know Bible history, you will never understand what he's truly speaking of. So during the time of Rehoboam as well as Jeroboam, there was a split in the kingdom. You have Judah, Benjamin, and Levi split from the northern kingdom. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi became the Jews. The northern kingdom later on was called Gentiles, was called Greeks, was called uncircumcision. So in the New Testament, the, the Northern Kingdom took on many different titles, which you were never properly educated in. Let's go to Ezekiel 37 verse 22 now. Ezekiel 37 verse 22. Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 22. And I will make them one nation in the hand. In the land upon the mountains of Israel. Mm -hmm. And one king shall be king to them all. So why is God saying, I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel? Read. 
And one king shall be king to them all. Mm -hmm. And they shall be no more two nations. And they shall be no more two nations. That's why Cornelius says it's an unlawful thing for one to keep company of another nation. Read. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. That's what Cornelius was making reference to. The division of the kingdoms. The division of the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom of Israel. The southern kingdom being called Jews, consistent of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. And the northern kingdom being called Greeks. The northern kingdom being called Gentiles. The northern kingdom being called uncircumcision. What else were they called? Now, let's go back to Colossians 3, verse 11. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew. So we just identify who the Greeks were. It is evident that the Greeks were the Israelites, the Jews. The northern kingdom primarily. The ten tribes of Israel can't be refuted. Read. Circumcision nor uncircumcision. So the circumcision were the southern kingdom, the Jews. During the time of the Maccabees, we have Mattathias as well as the Assyrians were forcibly converting or circumcising Israel back into the covenant of Abraham to receive the promise. Read. Barbarian, Scythian. So who are the barbarians? Who are the barbarians? Let's go to Acts 28 verse 1 because we read barbarians. And today's terminology of barbarians is uh, misunderstood. We call barbarians the people that's uneducated or uncivilized people. That's the modern um, definition of barbarian. The book of Acts, chapter 28, verse 1. So Paul, the, what you're going to realize in all of Paul's letters, you can find the historical account found in a book of Acts. In order to understand Paul's letter, you must read the book of Acts. Or you'll be lost. You'll never know what's truly going on or the people who Paul's talking about. Acts 28. The book of Acts chapter 28 verse 1. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness. Mm -hmm. For they kindled a fire and received us everyone because of the present rain and because of the cold. So this was Paul's first encounter with the barbarians or the barbarous people. Read. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, they came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he have escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffers not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit, they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. Mm -hmm. In the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island. So the barbarians recognized, recognized that God was working with Paul. So this was his first encounter. So what is the true definition of a barbarian or a barbarous people? A barbarian was one that did not speak the Greek language. I'll say it again. It only means one that did not speak the Greek language. That's all a barbarian meant. Now let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 6. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 6. Now, brother. If I come unto you speaking with tongues, what well, shall I profit you? Except I should speak to you either by revelation. So Paul's saying, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, now people in the Christian church think that tongues is talking about wa ba boo ba boo ba boo da ba ba wa ka boo 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 ba ba be. No tongues. Did, did you understand what I just said? No sir. No. What do I say? Boo ba la ba la ka la ba ha la ba la ja ba la ba. Bunch of nothing. Yo, listen. I went to the Christian church and I used to see people all around me. I'm like, yo, I want to speak that. But I couldn't interpret it. So Paul is saying, if I come, read that again. Now, brother, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? What tongues is he speaking about? Another language. If I come speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? Let's prove that, that the tongue is making reference to another language. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. The book of Acts, chapter 2. Let me jump to verse 8. Mm, go to verse 3. Verse 3. <laughs> and, there appeared unto clothing, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as of fire. 
and it sat upon each of them. So it says, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Let's see if this tongues is talking about the glossinalia that they speak in a Christian church. Go to verse 8. Verse 8, and how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. That's what it's speaking about, their own tongue wherein we were born, meaning their own language where they were born. So when the Bible references tongue, it's making reference to their own language. Language, that's all it makes, that's all it's speaking about. Not this glossinalia that they uh, eat in my all white man created in the Christian church. Now let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 6. Mm -hmm. Now brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues. Speaking with another language. Because Paul was well educated in a Greek tongue. In a Hebrew tongue. And I think that's it, right? Yes, Greek sir. and Hebrew. Read on. What shall I profit you except I should speak to you either by revelation mm -hmm. or by knowledge? Or by prophesying or by doctrine. Mm -hmm. And even things without life given sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds. Mm -hmm. How shall it be known what is pipe or harp? So he says, and even things without life given sound, with whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds. Read. For if the trumpet given uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So if you have a trumpet, a trumpet gives a certain sound. So you're accustomed to the sound of a trumpet. But if it's an unknown sound, you might wait a minute. How am I supposed to know that was the war horn? No, there's a specific sound that you can interpret to identify whether this is war or not. So Paul's making reference to, if I speak to you guys in different languages, how would you understand? Read. Verse 9. So likewise ye, except you utter by the tongue words, easy to be understood. Meaning speak and words easy to be understand. Read a language that everybody knows. Not try to be deep and show people your wisdom that I know this many languages. Articulate, because that's what people were doing back then. Read. How shall it be known when it's spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. Mm -hmm. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, mm -hmm. and none of them is without signification. Read. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speak of the barbarian. So read that again. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the language, read. I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian. Meaning an unknown language. So the Greeks, anybody that did not speak the Greek tongue, whether it be in the Roman captivity, whether it be the Greek captivity, you were called a barbarian. Because a barbarian, by definition, is one that did not speak the Greek tongue. That's all it means. All right, now let's go to back to the mannerism of the Israelites. Back to the mannerism of the Israelites. This is the mannerism of the, the manners of the Israelites. Yet, this was the reason that the Greeks looked upon them as an ignorant people, seeing they will learn nothing but their own law. They called them barbarians. What did the Greeks call the Jews? Barbarians. What did the Greeks call the Jews? Barbarians. Greece? As they did all nations that were not Greeks. Mm -hmm. And despise them more than any other strangers upon account upon account of their religion. The Greeks despise the Israelites more than any other nation. Read. Which appeared to them austere and absurd. Mm -hmm. They saw them refrain from debauchery, mm -hmm. not out of uh, frugality and policy. That's it. So the Greeks called the Israelites barbarians. There's further proof. Now let's go back to Colossians 3 verse 11. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 11. Mm -hmm. when, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian. Hmm, who are the Scythians? Let's go back now. Let's go to the other document. So this is the book called Key to the Northwest European Origins by Raymond F. McNair. It has already been brought to our attention that according to the Behistun rock inscriptions, this name, Scythians, is one of the first names which Israel born in exile. See how simple that is? Scythian is the wow. first name that Israel born and born in exile. So the Scythians were the Israelites. So within each captivity, what you're going to realize is we lost a sense of our identity and we took on other titles. Just like we in a Greek captivity, we didn't call ourselves Jews, but we were called Greeks. And 
specifically the ten tribes of Israel. We were also called, the southern kingdom was calling the northern kingdom uncircumcised. You have the Greeks were calling the Israelites or the Jews barbarians. And we took on the title Scythians and the different captivities. Now, finish this verse. Barbarian, Scythian, born nor, born nor free, mm. but Christ is all in all. But Christ is all in all. So, what did we learn today? That the Greeks are Israelites. That the uncircumcision, the circumcision, are the Israelites. That the barbarians and the Scythians are all Israelites. The reason why there's no difference when you read all throughout the New Testament is because that they're both were of the same kingdom, of the same nation of people, which was the nation of Israel. But throughout the different captivities, they've been split and divided into two kingdoms. That's why in the New Testament, you read Gentile, you read Greeks, you read uncircumcision, you read barbarian, you read Scythian. Because why? Because the 10 tribes was taking on these different titles. Well, you ever wonder why you don't read Ephraim? You don't read Manasseh? You read Jew? You read Judah, you read Benjamin, you read Levi, but what happened to the rest of the remainder of the 10 tribes? They took on the titles of the other nations. They took on different identity. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof, I-U-I-C, we deliver the truth.